That'll get you up here this morning. <laughs> Good morning to you here on this Wednesday, everyone. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie E. Robport. Yes, we have a special surprise for you yes. here this morning. We want to introduce you to Stella Escobedo's baby. Oh, look, look at, at that. this cutie. This is Milana Grace Escobedo. I love that name, Milana so Grace. Uh, she was born yesterday at 2.37 in the afternoon. Look at her. I cannot get over those cheeks. Check out Prad Dad right there, Gilbert. I yep. mean, that smile says it I all. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. So she was born 7 pounds, 8 ounces, 19 and 3 quarters in length. That's pretty that's tall. Pretty good. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's we know. pretty good. Stella's yeah. pretty tall. So is her, uh, the baby's dad. Uh, Stella told us she is doing well, as you can tell from that gorgeous smile she has mm -hmm. after giving birth. I'm so impressed. Uh, they're so excited to be a family of four. Their hearts are full, she says. So we are so happy for you, too, Stella. And a oh. four-year-old daughter, Daniela, <laughs> is also super excited yeah. to... Uh, to welcome this new addition. Her so, sister. congratulations, Stella oh and goodness. family, the Escobedo family of four. You guys, now. those cheeks, though, are amazing. That's uh, something to pinch. be proud of. Oh, Can yeah. I pinch? Can I kiss from afar? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Check in with Evan here. Isn't she just a cute? Oh, so cute. And like you said, Stella still looks like a model in her exactly. pictures, even though she just what gave going birth. On? <laughs> Beautiful there. And like you said, yeah, a younger sister now to add to the family. So, uh, very cute there. Okay, let's take a look outside. We're starting off our Wednesday morning with dry skies, overcast conditions for the most part, a few very light drizzles over the mountaintops, not looking to affect any of our uh, kind of major cities out there. Here's the view from Mount Woodson right now where you can see we're not as socked in as we were for earlier in the week, uh, but we do have some of those clouds out there that are affecting uh, our ability to see the sun once it starts to come out, which will be in about a half hour, 45 minutes or so. Conditions are mostly in the low 50s and uh, overcast skies. Looks like downtown San Diego is starting to see a little bit of clearing and we'll see that continue on through the rest of the day. And then in just a bit, we'll talk about about uh, those several rounds of showers that could be coming our way as we head closer to the weekend. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning to you. So 602 still overall pretty quiet with your travel times. There are two things I want to mention, including this stalled car on the 805 North Bond side right at Murray Ridge Road. It's right at that exit ramp there, but you're able to bypass that pretty easily. Over on the 125, if you are going to be driving North Bond, just know that there is some sort of spill. So we've got a stall, a spill could be potentially oil there. This is right at the 94, so single lane is blocked. Quick check at the South County where the Coronado Bridge is building. Everything to the north still nice and quiet. Netta. Today, a man accused of killing a beloved teacher and football coach is expected to face a judge for the first time. 30-year-old Jesse Alvarez faces a murder charge in the death of this man, Mario Fierro. News 8's Chris Crow is live outside the Hall of Justice downtown with a closer look at the day ahead in court. Chris? Uh, good morning, Eric and Netta. And, and look, as we've been telling you throughout the time that we've been covering this story, there is a connection between Mario Fierro and Jesse Alvarez. This was not a random crime, at least alleged by investigators. And it starts with some court documents that we also uncovered, which showed that Alvarez was dating uh, Fierro's current uh, fiance uh, for about three and a half years. The problem, though, uh, that relationship ended in a tumultuous way. Uh, the fiance for Fierro actually uh, tried to get a restraining order that was denied, but in the court documents in which she described her relationship at the time with Alvarez, she said it was, quote, there was a, quote, pattern of control, manipulation, and emotional abuse, which increased over time. Now, uh, th that's what appears to be the motivation for uh, this murder at the time. At least that's what investigators so far have revealed and we do expect to hear a little bit more about this but uh, there was also flowers uh, excuse me flyers that went around Cathedral Catholic High School warning staff and students uh, that if Alvarez was seen to call security so this was somebody uh, that Fierro his fiance and even the school that they worked at they were fellow co-workers as well too uh, were aware of and were worried about uh, potentially his presence there on campus now Fierro was a beloved loved football coach as well as a teacher there at Cathedral Catholic High School. Uh, he went to the University of San Diego High School, which later became Cathedral Catholic High School, and he graduated in 2002. So that job was a homecoming for him. Again, a football coach and teacher as well. And it really in the days after his death there on February 1st in his, uh, in his car in North Park that that happened in the early morning hours, we've seen an outpouring of support both at the school uh, a nearby church as well as the scene uh, in which this happened from a number of former students as well as players. And we've seen also an outpouring of support 
uh, on social media. There is no doubting that Fierro was a beloved figure in this community. Uh, and today marks the beginning uh, of this case here with this arraignment of Jesse Alvarez. So this is uh, taking place at 10 a.m. this morning. And if there are any developments, we'll be sure to let you know. But this is generally pretty procedural. Uh, court hearing in which we start to get some court dates and some uh, potentially even uh uh, a plead here from uh, Jesse Alvarez, either guilty or not guilty. So we expect to hear some of that uh, later on today, again, around 10 a.m. Eric and Netta. So oh, many families impacted by this, Chris. Thank you very much. Now, opening arguments begin today in former President Trump's impeachment trial. It's expected to last about a week. Yesterday's proceedings focused on whether the trial itself was constitutional. Deborah Alferon is live on Capitol Hill now with an update for us. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning, Eric and Netta. Today, House impeachment managers, they have their work cut out for them. We're hearing we're going to see never-before-seen video as they try and make the connection between former President Trump's words and the violence that happened here on January 6th. House prosecutors opened the impeachment trial of former President Trump with a graphic video montage of the January 6th riots on Capitol Hill. This was a national tragedy. And President Trump is singularly responsible for inciting it. Yesterday, the impeachment managers and Mr. Trump's lawyers debated whether it was constitutional to prosecute a former president. Presidents can't inflame insurrection in their final weeks and then walk away. So the slippery slope principle will have taken hold if we continue to go forward with what is happening. Mr. Trump's legal team argued he cannot be tried because he's a private citizen, but their presentation was criticized as disjointed, even by members of the GOP. Six Republicans voted with Democrats to move forward with the trial. President Trump's team were disorganized, almost as if they were embarrassed of their arguments. Sources familiar with Mr. Trump's reaction told CBS News he was angry with his lawyer's lackluster performance, which at times rambled on. We still know what records are, right? On the thing you put the needle down on and you play it. Speaking from the same chamber that was taken over by rioters, lead impeachment manager Jamie Raskin choked up as he recounted having his daughter with him that day. Senators, this cannot be our future. President Biden has said he is not focused on the trial. It's not clear at this point whether they're going to call any witnesses. Certainly, they've got that video, and it is super compelling. Eric and Netta. It is going to be quite the week there on Capitol Hill. All right, Deborah, thanks so much for the update. Yeah. Mm -hmm. County health officials are reporting a second straight day of new COVID-19 cases under 1,000. 789 cases have been reported now out of more than 12,000 tests. This is a 6% positive rate. The two-week rolling average now below 7%. 32 new deaths now bring our county's death toll to 2,853 people. The Oceanside Unified School District unanimously votes in favor of allowing select students back on campus. It came during a special board meeting last night and after parents rallied for reopening. The district will allow split day in-person instruction to pre-K through fifth grade students receiving special education beginning the week of March 8th. And general education pre-K through fifth grade students to return to split day instruction starting March 15th. Coming up at 630, we're going to break down what pediatricians are saying about opening all schools. A lot more people are calling for kids to get back into the classroom here. And with the uh, outdoor weather, I can tell you, you know, just around 230 every day, all of the kids in our neighborhood just run out in the street. <laughs> they're like done with their Zoom and they're ready to just yeah. get some fresh air. They need that. That show that. Recess. Some distant social <laughs> interaction they need. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Recess oh. in the streets these days. Yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> recess in the streets. That sounds like a movie. I like it. Uh, we are waking up to some warmer, very mild temperatures out there. I'm not done harping on this polar vortex that is so incredibly cold uh, with our friends in the north central portion of the US. 
Bismarck, North Dakota is at 14 below zero right now. Minneapolis at zero degrees. Lincoln, Nebraska at seven. And notice how this extends all the way down south as far as Texas. Dallas right now is at 28 degrees. So we got to be thankful with our temperatures in the 50s. And I'm going to keep talking about it for as long as we've got this polar vortex affecting those temperatures because it's important to recognize what's going on around the country. But boy, for us, we're staying mild. 62 is that forecast high for this afternoon. Average would be 65, so we'll be a few degrees below normal for this time of year. Slight warming trend as we head through your Thursday. Tomorrow will be an even warmer day with mid and upper 60 degree temperatures. Increased rain chances as we head from Friday into your Sunday, Friday morning, and then again Sunday morning look to be those two spots to keep an eye on. And then as we head into next week, we will dry out quite a bit.